Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a home educating mum of three from the UK. And today I wanted to answer a question. It's a very specific question from one of my lovely viewers um, in my DMs on Instagram. And the question was, do you get wobbles uh, about home educating? Do you feel like maybe you should not be doing it? And I said yes. All the freaking time, fans. <laughs> all the time like I try and liken it as when I'm going to a wedding I or something like that some kind of function I'll buy myself a new dress and more often than not I'll buy the dress well ahead of time I get home and and I put it away and then when it comes to the actual event I put the dress on and I'm like oh god I hate it oh my gosh what was I thinking it's too booby maybe it's too leggy maybe it's oh gosh maybe it's not enough maybe I feel like it's not enough booby and you know it just I just go spiral in my head and it all, I'm just like, why am I bothering? I just shouldn't go, ah! Anxiety gets the better of me and I just think, what's the point? Then I kind of take a break, take a breath and I'm like, you know what? My hair's greasy, Um, you know, it's 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 not all done up. I haven't put a bit, I'm gonna put a bit of mascara on, maybe a bit of lip gloss. You know, I haven't got my nice shoes on yet. I haven't done my nails, like, just put it away. So I put it away. I go and have a shower or a bath, usually a bath, and do all my bit or do all my glam, you know, my glamming up. Then I put the dress back on and I'm like, oh, you know what? Actually, it's all right. It's all right. This is this is the dress. This is meant to be. I'm ready to go. My home edge wobbles are just like that. I I'm like, yeah, this is amazing. I'm doing it. Whoop whoop whoop. Then something will happen. And I might be having a bad day, something else might be triggering me, and home ed gets the brunt of that. And I'm like, oh no, can't do it, can't do it, I'm useless, I'm really bad at this, my kids clearly hate it, maybe they'd be better off from school. And then, you know what, I go, you know what, I think I need to take a walk. Let's go for a walk. Let's go and get a coffee, when we were allowed to. And uh, let's go do something else. Let's do some arts and crafts. Let's play Game of Life or Cluedo or something, let's do something just not thinking about home ed. And sometimes that happens when I've looked up all of the details about the national curriculum because that is overwhelming and you don't need to do like three quarters of that nonsense. So it usually happens when I've done something like that, which is stupid, don't do it. Don't look up the national curriculum. Don't, if you wanna save yourself. The wobble <laughs> of that. Um, and then I feel better. And I go, you know what? I am the best teacher for my children. I know them better than anyone and my husband knows them best than anyone and we wouldn't have this close bond with them if they weren't with us all the time. So, pff, it disappears. And sometimes I am not able to do that myself so I reach out to some really good friends within the home educating, home educating community and I'm like, ah, ah. and the biggest wobble that I have, I had recently was Charles was really reluctant to write. And I was like, he's never ever gonna learn to write, I should have just sent him to school, he's never ever gonna do it, and so on. And my friends said to me, my kid's older than yours and he still is at that point. He won't write. Oh, okay. And another one of my friends went, yeah, mine too. But we've been using this workbook and we've been using this program and they're so much better. Oh, oh, I'm gonna try that, I'll try that. Or, oh, I know something similar to that that I'll try and that helps. And my biggest wobble at the moment is that Bess is almost seven and she's still not what I would class as reading. She has summer reading ability, she knows most of her phonetic sounds, but she's just really a reluctant reader. She does not want to sit down and look at a, read a book with me and I do sometimes get her to sit down and read a book with me. But it's very rare. She doesn't just doesn't want to do it, doesn't want to learn. But then she goes, I really wish I could read. Like, well let me teach you to read. No, I can't read. And that's my biggest wobble at the moment is I have a child who's almost seven who can't read. And that's really, really rubbish. It feels really, really rubbish. But then I go, you know what? There's societal pressures on me that she should have been reading at four. And that's a load of rubbish because children in Finland don't even start school until they're seven. That's when they learn to read. So we're good. <laughs> we're good. And um, loads and loads of countries all the way around the world start education at seven. They don't start at four, like in this country. There's a lot of societal pressure in this country to start early, and you don't need to. Emma, I'm talking to you. Future Emma, having this wobble, I'm talking to you. <laughs> um, 
So uh, you know what, I'm okay. She is autistic. She has some other undiagnosed learning disability. We are pretty sure that is lurking. Um, there's kind of dyspraxia has been flown around. There's dyslexia in the family. Um, there's lots of stuff that could potentially be harboring her desire to learn to read and also her ability to learn to read right now. That doesn't mean that in a year's time something's gonna click and she's not just gonna be fluently reading like her brother is. And then I remind myself that Charles at six, almost seven, also was not reading. He was at the point where she is. And I remind myself, I mixed up their education a little bit. I was like, okay, mm. we're gonna stop phonics for a bit. We're gonna do sight reading, we're gonna see if that clicks. Okay, we're gonna stop doing this program. We're gonna try this program. And then I made sure that I read to her one-to-one -one every single day. And then I got her to try and read to me one-to-one -one every single day. Him, I'm getting confused about which I'm talking about. I got Charles to do that. I'd read to him and then he read to me. And within six months, he was fluently reading. And now he is almost nine and he has the reading age of a child who is 11. I think I did okay. Um, so I, I have wobbles. And you know, I've just shared some of them with you. Those are the wobbles I have right now. Um, and I, the another wobble that I have is that Albert doesn't go to preschool and we tried to get him into a preschool. He did not settle. He was there a really long time. We kept trying and he didn't settle. He keeps talking about his friends that he, he made when he was there. I have no way of contacting them. I know that the particular friend he talks about is at school now. So there's no, and I have no way of contacting her mum. And he doesn't feel like he has any other friends. And that's really sad because he's almost four and he should have lots of friends. And COVID's kind of taken that away from him. Like I would have taken him to other things and meetups and groups and stuff. And I haven't been able to do that. And that really is sucky. So that's my wobble with him right now is that I feel like he is lonely outside of his siblings. And that's a horrible feeling because I feel like it's my fault. Um, it's not my fault, it's COVID's fault because I would have taken him to groups and, and played, played. But maybe I think, maybe I'm like, oh, I need to arrange something with like another family and help him make a friend who he can really play with, who can be his best bud. At least one, one person, you know? So yeah, that's my wobble with him. Hi Lily, I don't have any wobbles with you apart from your recall is shocking, but that's my fault because I haven't been consistent. And you're an extra street dog who has a mind of her own. You are? All right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have wobbles about everything. I have wobbles about my horses and their training and I have wobbles about her and her training. I have wobbles about some plans I have that I would love to share with you guys at some point. Um, mainly it's kind of courses to help you guys in your home educating and to help you home educate your children. Um, I have those and I have wobbles like, are you guys gonna actually want that? Um, is that something that's gonna be well received? Am I gonna do all of the work and make all the content and then I'm not gonna get anything back for it? And yeah, I'm, I have everything. You have a wobble about everything. There's always something that is making you go, hmm. And that's okay. It's completely okay. It's completely normal. And there are some days when it just, the day goes so badly. Nobody wants to do their home ed. Nobody wants to read a book. Nobody wants to do anything creative. Nobody wants to go out and play on the trampoline so mummy can have her cup of tea in peace. And I think to myself, fluff it. I mean, that's not what I think to myself. Let's be honest here. I think something a lot stronger. Fluff it. I'm just going to send them to school. I'm done here. I don't want to be your teacher anymore. No, I don't say that to them. I think I might have said it to them once, but I was really upset. And I was like, Fluff it, don't wanna be a teacher, don't wanna do this anymore. Go away, leave me alone. And and I, I sometimes I feel like that, sometimes I think that, and you know, I spend my time making videos about home education, and a lot of you see me as being kind of knowledgeable, and I feel like I'm at least knowledgeable enough to share my knowledge with you. No, 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 no. Um, but you know, I'm still normal, I'm still human, and I still worry if I'm doing it right, if I'm making the right choices for them, and my husband does too. Uh, battery. 
there we go so yeah we both worry we both have wobbles and i think he probably has less wobbles than me because he's not here on a day-to-day -day basis but yeah i wobble all the time the best thing to do when you're feeling a wobble is to come and watch some of my videos because i will go and watch my favorite youtuber um angela braniff at this gathered nest or at her channel her other channel angela braniff and i will watch her homeschooling videos and i'm like oh she can homeschool eight freaking kids i can homeschool three <laughs> um and she gives and there's lots of other homeschool mums i've also joined um, a program that she and two two other homeschooling mums set up called better together um and i feel like that really helps like knowing there's a big group of homeschooling parents um particularly mums who are there for me i also made sure that i have joined lots of local home education groups um obviously you know we are in the new forest and there is a new forest home education group there's also a bournemouth and pool one there's also um, a south coast inclusive home educators which is specifically um a specifically inclusive group that are inclusive of everything um which is really important to me and to a lot of people in the group and there's also Southampton groups, there's Portsmouth groups, all of these kind of like big areas that are nearby the New Forest, there's lots of groups. So if you are in one of those areas, join those groups, say hi, if you know who I am, if you see, if you see my name pop up, um, say hi to me. I always love to speak to you in real life. Um, and, but find, find the groups, you know, where you are. You just have to type in home education, your nearest big town, your county, anything like that, and you will find something. Yes, you can get the guinea pig. Yeah. Um, yeah. Check out home age groups, make some friends, share experiences. Like I'm having a wobble because my child is struggling with, my child does not want to, my child is lonely, my child whatever. And you gonna, I'm gonna find you are gonna find at least ten people who's gonna go, Yep, yeah, been there, done that, this is what I did. You're not gonna feel any alone anymore. You're not gonna feel like you're failing, you're not gonna feel like you are about to be pushed into a deep chasm of failure because it does feel like that doesn't it when we have that mum guilt that parent guilt um i'm not gonna just say mum guilt because parents or you know, dads feel it people who are not mums or dads but our parents feel it um and we all need a break <laughs> we all need to give ourselves a break um even if we're not homeschooling like how many people right now are saying I'm going to give my children the COVID vaccine or other people are going, no, I don't think I'm going to give my child the COVID vaccine. There's, that's, that's another thing. Like loads of people are doubting and worried about what they're going to do. And that's okay. It's scary. Home educating can be scary sometimes when you feel like that. And I usually find it's because there's something else going on in my life that's making me feel like that as well. And I'm just diverting it onto home education. So my battery's about to die so i'm gonna say goodbye now and stick this on youtube for you to watch have a great weekend and i will see you on monday for the concluding part of our learning to read series bye my mind is filled with pictures of when we used to dance but now i don't know where you are Miss you so bad, won't you come back to me? I've got you in my head, you're all that I see. I've lost all my chances, I know that I am too late. I'm thinking of you, I'm thinking of you, I'm thinking of you, wondering if you're thinking of